Navy Vet 76 at the range. My uh, TSOS 45, model 1911A1 service special. That as you've seen in my previous videos, I've had the sights changed, grips changed. Uh, last time out, well, time, time before that, I was shooting cast and I was getting some leading. I had no idea how fast I was running. So a friend of mine gave me some Lyman number two lead. And um, I was using wheel weight, wheel weight lead. <coughs> and um, like I said, I was getting leading. <coughs> um, so I didn't know, I had no idea how fast it was running. I do have the chronograph set up today, as you can see there. And um, sorry, I got the camera kind of. <clears throat> so I'm I'm resting the gun also so that I can get some better accuracy readings because when I do it freehand, I'm all over the place. Uh, it's got a hair trigger on it. I've got five rounds downrange now, and they range from 970 to 931 feet per second. Um, mainly, I just want to see if we're getting leading. I need to work on my grip. I got really weak wrists. Oh, what happened there? I had a failure to feed. That's weird. Never seen that before. Check and make sure everything's okay. Everything's fine. I don't know why it did that. <coughs> That one's 950, so our speed's not bad. Um, I'd like to save my brass, but going all over the place. But uh, anyway, I'm just really checking to see if I'm getting any leading. Because when I cleaned this the last time, I was getting some leading in there, and it does look like there's some leading in there. Okay, I can't really show it on the camera. But anyway, we got a minute to the ceasefire. Uh, switch the camera, zoom in, and that's what we're getting right now. I do better with the uh, jacketed bullets, but you got to start somewhere. And this this pistol is something new to me. Still learning how to shoot it and everything. Reload for it. But I am able to reload for this better than I am the 32 ACPs. Them things are driving me nuts. All right. Well, anyway. I run 10 rounds through there just to see what kind of speeds and what the leading, if I was getting leading. I've talked to some people. Uh, this is, this bullet um, has a, just a slight bevel on the bottom of it. And uh, I've got them sized to 452 diameter, which is the groove diameter of this pistol. Um, there's two things I can do. I can switch to a bullet that has a f completely flat base, as it was said to me. Or um, I could also try slowing, lightening up the load a little bit. So I'm at 
grains are unique right now. Um, so that's where we're at now. I've got 40 left, and I'm just gonna. I want to move on to something else. Um, I did bring the 32s today. Um, my Zestava M70 hasn't been. Um, it didn't shoot at all, and there are some variations in chambers on 32 caliber pistols um, and they're a real pain in the butt to load for so after some research, hold on I'm going to move the camera after some reading I was told that I should try these these are the cellar boy and I think these are made in like Czechoslovakia or someplace and this is what I was using which is the PMC uh, bronze bullet and they just would not work uh, I was getting the light strikes and they would not fire <clears throat> so I had this gun back from the gunsmith I know there's nothing mechanically wrong with this gun, but it does not like the PMCs. And oh boy, I just opened this up upside down and now I've got a mess. So, uh, after reading that, uh, these will more than likely work. Why? I don't know. Uh, something to do with case thickness and bullet diameters. So there really isn't, as far as I can tell, there's not some, there's just, just different standards between the European 32s and, um, I want to say American 32s. So, I have not tried this bullet. I'm going to try this bullet. See how it works. Now, this is the uh, cellar below. And now, I'm, I'm going to also, just to show you, I'm going to load five of these. And see there slightly different bullet <clears throat> all right so okay I'm going to start with the uh, PMCs just to show you what kind of craziness I got going on with this guy. And it's a liar out of me. Last week it wouldn't fire. And there it is. That was the last round. And it didn't fire. Light strike. So, I don't know what's going on with this ammo. And we're running right around 900 feet per second with this ammo, by the way, in case you're curious. But uh, I don't know what to say now. That's weird. It wasn't working before. 
just wasn't. And now it is. So I, I don't know what's going on. I can just tell you it's, it's a real headache to try and figure it out. Now I'm going to try the uh, Cellar Beloy ammo. Supposedly, from what I read, this should function pretty good. This stuff was expensive. Supposedly, there's some difference in the cases. Um, I am recording, right? That one's a thousand feet per second. And again, light strike. I don't know. I've had several of these pistols. And uh, they, every one of them's done this, these M70s. Thousand six. Thousand. Thousand twenty two. So I don't know. That wasn't the problem. Every once in a while you get a light strike. And I can't figure it out. Um, I can tell you the, uh, cellar below is about 100 feet per second faster than the PMCs, so it's a little hotter load, but, um, this gun here is a headache, uh, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to conceal carry this and have my life depend on it because it's not a dependable firearm at all. Now let's try something else. You all ought to be able to recognize this. My uh, Ruby. And um, I've had quite a bit of work done to this gun. And this thing really shoots well. It shoots the PMC. And man, it took took a while to get there with this one. This one had all kinds of issues. And I finally found a mag with a double A stamp on the bottom, which is what this gun has on it. It has a double A. And... Um, So the ruby run. <laughs> so I got <clears throat> So the ruby's running really good. This thing is heavy as a hammer. And um very simple gun to take apart and clean. However, as most of you probably already know that own these things, the parts are not generally interchangeable. And that's why they have these codes on them. This one's got a circle AA right here. I know you can't see it. And um, if you want magazines that work for the, this gun, that has to more or less have the AA stamp on it, which means it was made by the same people that made this firearm. Um, one thing I have done is I changed out the spring in the magazine, and uh, everything else is just it's uh, it works really well now. Originally, the disconnector inside of here was misaligned, and it wasn't 
it wasn't working correctly and it would not fire a second round but after some bending and trial and error finally got that to work along with the different magazine and now it works very well so I, I don't understand it I don't understand why this gun and this one both 32 ACP and this old thing works better than the newer firearm I, I just don't get it these are a real headache Maybe that's my experience with the uh, Zastava M70. Uh, they're not consistent in the way they work. Piece of crap. Well, let's go back to the uh, M70 again and try some more of these um, seller Beloy. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Or Sillier, Sillier Beloy. With this, um, these light strikes, it's, I don't get it. Because I had this at the gunsmith to try and fix that problem. And, uh, Thought we had that all taken care of. So, it can't be the magazine because they're feeding. All right. But you saw the Ruby. The Ruby's working great. So we'll try it again. I've never chronographed this before, so this is interesting. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's driving me nuts. <laughs> this ammo is not cheap. This uh, Cellar Boy stuff is not cheap. But um, I want to save one of these bullets so that I can compare it to the uh, PMCs. Supposedly, there'll be a difference in the case dimensions as far as the thickness. Uh, I won't really know until I look at it. But that doesn't look like a very deep 
strike on that primer. So, oh, I don't know. I could use some suggestions. I'd like to reload for this. Um, not understanding what the occasional failure to fire, failure to feed, I'm not really understanding what that's all about. Yeah, this, this stuff wasn't cheap. And reloading for this would be a lot more economical considering the kind of shooting that I do. And I would like to work with my handguns more. The 45. I'm getting leading. I'm going to try a different bullet. And see if that helps. Could be... Uh, because of the geometry of a bullet, I could be getting some gas cutting. That's what was suggested. I can try that. Now it's working. I don't know. That can't be all of them. It's not. <coughs> Just a really light strike. It needs to hit a, hit a little harder. Again, light strike. can say once once I get used to it it's uh pretty accurate when you're resting the gun you just can't get past this light strike thing every once in a while I don't know how to fix that gunsmith has been through the gun it does not work flawlessly obviously but uh those last few shots were right in the bullseye there. That's 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 uh that's pretty cool. I'll show you a picture of the bullseye, but it's kind of point I got the one on the right were my last shots and most of those were in the bullseye. So oh, good lord. I'm sorry, I gotta set this thing so you can see. So I don't know. I don't know about this thing. The Ruby. The Ruby seems to be shooting pretty doggone good. Let me use the loader.
Okay, did anybody count? One, two, three, four, five. I think there's nine times in there. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think there's nine rounds in there. <clears throat> hmm. Okay, now once it's cocked, it's really hard to get that out of there. Something's locked it back. I don't know what's going on here. There we go. It was the barrel. Okay. All right. That was eight. Yep. I pulled that one. <laughs> this little girl's working really good. We got him at the ceasefire. I'm very really happy with that ruby. I think I got all the bugs worked out of that. But this thing, as you can see, I'm getting a light strike every now and then. And it's always done that. And every one of these particular Zestaba M70s and 32 ACP, every one of them's done that. Now yeah, I got four more of these PMC or uh Siller Beloy. Left. Really like my old Ruby. Kind of an ugly thing, but it, uh, Okay, there's something going on here. Oh, duh. Um, get all the bugs out of it. it uh, it's shooting pretty good. Seems to be shooting reliably. It's got a heavy trigger pull. And it's shooting all over the place. <laughs> Other than that, it, uh, it works. And I thought I had a date on here. Yeah, so this one was made in 1916. It was used by the Fox in World War One. And after that, I don't know where it went. And the reason I know it was used by the French is because it has uh, two stars stamped on the base down here. Majority of these were sold under contract through various manufacturers in Spain to France. And um, too bad they couldn't get the interchangeability issue solved. They had too many... Too many different manufacturers of these. They just one of their problems was uh, their standards were different and uh, they were not interchangeable. So you'd use them until they fail and throw them away. 
So, but you can see that my, my issue with the Zestava is definitely not reliable. That, let's, I want to shoot some more of this. It's letting the heck out of the barrel. But this is a fairly new firearm. It doesn't have a lot of rounds through it. It could, could use some polishing, I guess. And I'm going to try to buy a different bullet mold for it. I'll try a round nose flat bottom bullet. And um, see how that does. Again, I I've, I've, know oh, I've said it several times before, but if you're budget conscious and you're looking for a 45, these, um, these T-Sauce guns, I think I'm pronouncing that right, are very very well made very well made you have all the features of the, of the Colt 1911 and uh, dimensionally I guess there's at least I know for this for sure the, the, the sights are slightly different so this slide had to be modified to accept uh, standard 1911 sights and I gotta get used to that. See that in there? Fill the speed. Hmm. That was the last round. <clears throat> I'll say though. This area right here can really chafe the crap out of this part of my hand. That recoil is something else. Maybe you know, some gloves would probably be ideal for this. Maybe some fingerless gloves, maybe. And something to manage the recoil in my wrist. I don't have a lot of upper body strength. I don't have muscular arm, arms my wrists are slightly weak and a two-hand hold I'm trying to work on that okay that one didn't want to feed yeah I'll try a round nose bullet next time and that ramp needs a little polishing too I can see that right now around those bullet would probably work better here than this one. got a hair trigger on it
almost no take up at all. Now I can see there's like some lead on the ramp and on into the chamber and so that will need some polishing too again like I said this is a fairly new firearm I don't have that many rounds through it I knew I didn't like the way it felt right out of the box so I took it to the gunsmith that had some work done on it. I put a different trigger on it. So it would fit my hand. Different grip. So it would fit my hand. And evidently the standard 1911 aftermarket. They evidently work on these So that's a good guy. And the trigger, he didn't say he get any kind of modification to the to the, to the trigger. He put a, a longer longer I don't know what the word is, length of pole, whatever. So from here to here is longer. Because I have long, long fingers. I've got a big grip. Alright, I got one that. go something fell off here huh little emblem fell off just broke off okay hang on to that little cute little brass button just broke off hmm. all right Breaks over with. Uh, now, yeah, the mic is still working. <sighs> this thing's going to be something else to try and clean. I can't see through my glasses. Definitely not a 32. I still, you know, it's grouping okay. Even with the wetting, you know, I could solve the problem just by uh, powder coating too. And then I wouldn't have to uh, worry about it so much. But I think around those bullets, with a flat bottom I mean this bullet works okay it's just the leading you know that, that can be a problem I know this winter I'll be able to shoot here it just got on cold. 
so I got a few indoor firearms like my pistols that I can take to the range and play with. The round count again. There's not a lot of rounds for this. I'm thinking you gotta wear this gun in a little bit. I know I had this adjusted the last time out. And that, again, you know, I don't know if you can see it in there, there's a feed, and that was the last round. That's probably more of a spring issue than anything else, but the way it was in there, it could be the ramp just needs polish. Uh, it's holding back on that last round. There we go. Alright. That's it. Again, that's uh, 5.9 grains of uh, unique. And I got res residue everywhere at carbon everywhere. Uh, this little, little medallion fell off of here. You can see I got one on the other side. It just fell off. It broke, actually broke off. Probably not a really big issue, but I need to go see my gunsmith. Have that looked at. Cause this is a new, this is a brand new, um, this is brand new, and uh, this shouldn't happen. But the, uh, the tea sauce comes in a nice, you can see here, I mean, nice little case with an extra magazine. You got your brush and cleaning powder. It also comes with a flag. Nice, nice case. Well, anyway, folks, I'm going to call it a day. And this is what we got today. Really nice gun. Little thing fell off. And I get to the gunsmith to see if I can get that replaced. It's a Stava M70, not very reliable. And the old 1916 Ruby doing really well. It's shooting very well. I'd like to find another magazine. Heavy as a hammer. Very well. Don't have a good day.